YouTube, Topaz Jace, back with another daily review, man. And this time we going back to that Black Friday tracks from J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar. And you know, the best thing to come out of this right here is the fact that we got the confirmation that this project that was often rumored, that everybody was speculating about, that there was some evidence that it was happening, is actually going to happen, as J. Cole said, probably dropping in fucking February, which I'm super fucking excited for that shit. That could easily be one of the best albums of next year and such. But ultimately, cooler heads must prevail, man. You got to understand, just because J. Cole and Kendrick are considered to be one and two in the industry right now, depending on whichever way you going with it, I feel J. Cole is one, Kendrick is two. But a combined effort from top artists hardly ever equate into what you think it should equate to, you did? Like, just because you got J. Cole and Kendrick number one and number two together doesn't mean you're going to get a number one fucking album. Because J. Cole and Kendrick is a different entity than just Kendrick by himself or just J. Cole by himself. They have to have the chemistry and put together the solid tracks in order for it to fucking work. Like, we've seen it all the time going back to, say, The Farm with Nas, Foxy Brown, and AZ. That was supposed to be one of the dopest albums ever, especially seeing as though Dr. Dre was overseeing that shit, but it ended up being a massive fucking flop. This could happen that way too. But what they did for these tracks and such, man, they went on ahead and took instrumentals from each other and redid them motherfucking songs. And quite honestly, I love them both. Just a few nitpicks though, I don't think Kendrick Lamar should have went and got the tale of two cities. I think he would have fit in a little bit better with the whole Fire Squad track and shit, man. But quite honestly, he still did the motherfucking thing on it. J. Cole on that All Right, man, that actually sounded like it could have been his motherfucking track, man. He did the motherfucking thing with that. On a side note though, one main reason why I'm happy that this project is happening is because we can finally end that discussion on who is the best right now, you did? Because right now, as I said, it's J. Cole or Kendrick. Some people throw in Big Crit right there. Usually I like number three, but whoever dominates this project will most likely be considered to being the best right now and my money is on J. Cole dude. Overall these two instrumentals man I definitely recommend people to go ahead peep them out if you haven't already they are fucking solid and I'm hoping that this is just something that they doing just to announce to the world that this project is happening and they'll have a ton of original music to come instead of just jumping from instrumental to instrumental that each other has fucking done you did. But that concludes today's review man and we're going to jump into a brief instrumental from underground producer J Tracks before we take some questions. So Andrew says hopefully that this Little Wayne Sillings 2 shit is just him just throwing out random shit and this Carter 5 is going to be vastly superior and such. And I'm right there with you. I hope that the Carter 5 is going to be fucking dope. But here's one thing that I've realized over years of doing this. Whatever music and artist continues to pop out before the album, usually the quality of music is rather damn similar, but this is a different type of thing here. Because the Carter 5 been fucking done, they just never gave him a release date. All of these tracks that he did for No Ceilings too, man, it's probably all newer shit that he just threw the fuck together while Cash Money's get off the fucking pot. And Needle in the Haystack says that Red Man does not give a fuck about fitting in with today's music. And nobody said that he should fit in with today's music. I'm pretty much like he should respect today's music. Enough to not talk that 90s was real hip-hop bullshit because that's how you create more enemies than what you actually need to have. Like you're starting to see the newer generation and shit getting upset that everybody keep throwing motherfucking salt on them. Like how Vince Staples was coming out in all of those articles and such, man. I mean, respect the new generation and the music that they doing instead of throwing salt on people that's really just trying to come up like you did back before. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there and you can go to DownloadPaz.com that's down there to read today's article.